Hey everyone, Doug here with BNH, and today, you know what? Let's go outside. Hey everybody, Doug here with BNH and Alan from BNH. And as you can see, we both have the brand new EOS R5 and EOS R6. We're going to be taking a look at these new camera studies. These just debuted. They are the latest in Canon's EOS mirrorless lineup, and they honestly look incredible. I cannot wait to get out there. There's a lot of new features to discuss here. Uh, completely new cameras here. These are 45 megapixels, 20 megapixels here, and we have 8K video and 4K video here, and 20 FPS burst on both cameras. There's also some new lenses we're going to cover today and some teleconverters. So we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. It is not losing you, Dave. You're able to really hold the shot. And it's so light. I mean, look at this. Come on, this is an 800 millimeter lens. 8K raw. Let's see what it can do. So that was just a few days ago when Alan and I got to test out the cameras. We then followed up with Drew from Canon to see what we got. Hi, everyone. I'm Drew McCallum, a technical advisor with Canon USA here in New York. Let's just kind of summarize right from the beginning the major features of these two new cameras. For the EOS R5, you're looking at a, a new 45 megapixel CMOS sensor. So we're really upping the resolution of what's uh, in our lineup in the, the mirrorless side of things. Both of them are sporting a Digic X image processor. Both of them have a continuous shooting rate of 12 frames per second mechanical and 20 frames per second electronic silent shutter. So those wedding mm, events, things wow. like that, you need to be quiet. Both of them are using our new dual pixel CMOS AF2. The autofocus, by the way, is really something on these cameras. It doesn't even feel like it's like it's slightly behind. It's box on his face. They've got a 100% area viewfinder coverage. So if you've got 100% edge to edge, top to bottom of where that camera is going to be able to uh, compose your subjects using that automatically selected uh, points. And there's 1,053 AF zones for you to work with. Beautiful. I went to SLRs into DSLRs and have transitioned into mirrorless over the past five, six years or so. Both of these cameras transitioned really beautifully. And I think it's important to note that none of us actually saw these cameras before we showed up that morning. So we just went out and played for the day. Now, as for the differences, there actually aren't that many. The big one is sheer megapixel count. 45 megapixels on the R5, 20 megapixels on the R6. You know, how much resolution do you need? Are you going to need 20 million pixels? I mean, which is going to be a lot for a lot of users. It really, 20 million, that's a sweet spot for so many people that um, if you're out doing landscapes and detail work and architecture, then the 45s can be right up your alley for sure. If you're doing a lot of crop and recompose stuff, that 45 is going to come in really handy, but you can do huge prints from 20 million pixels and, and really uh, get away with a lot. Now, as far as sensitivity is concerned for both cameras, the R5 standard range is 100 to 51,200, while the R6's ISO range is 100 to 102,400. Both units feature dual card slots, but the R5 has a split CF Express and UHS-2 SDXC arrangement. Now, the R6 has a dual UHS-2 SDXC setup. The EVFs between the two units are also a little different, with a 5 million dot EVF on the R5 and a 3.69 million dot EVF on the R6, though both use a high refresh rate display for smooth motion. But the main differences are really in the uh, mode dial selections. The wheel here is a mode dial and selector for the R5, so you would choose between uh, all of your things like um, aperture priority, shutter priority, full manual program. Also in the R5, you'll notice that there is a really nice, very useful OLED screen. This is just for status indication. The brightness can be changed. There's a backlight um, and it always stays enabled. So if you have, for example, multiple camera bodies, you know ahead of time exactly what mode this is on, just like you would with the traditional dial which of course brings us to the R6 here. Now the R6 does not have the OLED screen. It does not have the uh, inset button mode dial. It just has a traditional control dial here. They're also the first Canon cameras to support in-body image stabilization. When you're working with the R5 and R6 and say a 15 to 35 RF lens, that image stabilization in body and in lens is coordinated together. 
So with adapted lenses, with the EF glass and EFS glass, it's not coordinated together, but you do have the pitch, roll, and yaw of the sensor-based image stabilization, and then the image stabilization in the lens, the optical, they do work but they're just not coordinated together. But it's still, you do get that advantage. There were some shots where I just did not see how I could possibly get them without a stabilizer. I could see him doing everything. I could see his mouth open. When you find it, when you find the shot and you manage to you know, keep your breathing in place and everything, <laughs> it, it, it holds. It holds very well, and I was, I was kind of shocked at it. And there's a uh, snowy egret on the far end over there and I could just frame it between those branches and get some good shots of it, and it locks right on. We have the animal focus also on there, so it's locking right onto it. It seems to know exactly where the bird is. There was a, there was a, a focus point right on the bird's head. And again, this is the other side of a pond with an 800 millimeter lens, and it's just the center of the frame. And it was there, and it locked on it, and it was sharp, and I'm hand holding it. For the viewers out there, uh, Canon is announcing four new lenses and also two teleconverters. There's the RF 100-500 f4.5 to 7.1 L IS USM, which I found to be an incredibly versatile telephoto zoom. Got stabilization on here, and you know, I'm completely zoomed in at 105. The 100-500 I started the day with, that was probably the sharpest lens that I that I had handled that day, I think. The 100-500, we, we kept the same type of mentality of the weather resistance of L-series lenses. It, it has to perform at the L-series type of performance. Of at the long end, it's f7.1, which it seems like uh, it might be a slug, I mean, because that's a smaller aperture, and I think a lot of people get a knee-jerk reaction to that. And in use, I did not find it to be an impediment in any way. The, the lens was just as uh, easy and maneuverable at the long end as it was uh, at the 100 millimeter point. Then there's the RF 85 F2, which is a compact macro lens, very similar in design to Canon's earlier RF 35 F2. It includes an optical image stabilizer and features an STM motor, ideal for video. Yeah, so this is actually very similar to the way we designed the 35 uh, RF 35 lens, where this is an 85 millimeter f/2, but it does incorporate a half life size macro capability. So it's a 0.5x magnification on this, so you can get in very, very close. I think it's a. Uh, a little over a foot in, in minimum focusing distance. This is gonna look a little different in the background, but because you can focus so much closer in that portrait realm, it's gonna be a great lens that uh, is an entry into the portrait industry. If you're a, a wedding or a portrait photographer, you can get your detail work with one lens. So you can basically do it with the 85 and get your portraits as well. There was a cement wall that had been painted over many times and, and the paint was peeling through in different layers. And I shot with the 85 at its closest focusing point uh, at wide aperture. And first of all, the, the, the contrast and micro contrast was really spectacular from what mm. we've seen. The colors are vibrant, but what we both noticed was the dramatic fall off into blur in the foreground and background. And again, I'm working only inches away from the surface. The most interesting lenses by far that we got our hands on though were the RF 600 and 800 millimeter F11 DO lenses. These are, well, take a look for yourselves. So here is the 800 millimeter F11. This is fixed. Um, it looks huge, and it is huge, but it's super light. I mean, I can hold this one-handed. Boom! Claps it back in, take it right off. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. 800 millimeter, unbelievable. It's hard to convey. It's, it's, it can't be overstated that they are light. They are extremely light. And it's so light. I mean, look at this. Come on, this is an 800 millimeter lens. Come on, this is crazy. And by the way, don't let the F11 scare you. I was never aware that it was F11 during the entire use uh, time that I was using these lenses when I'm looking through them or focusing or moving with them. The significance in size, if you're going on a, a cruise or you're going on a safari in Africa or whatever, and you're limited to how much space you can put in your camera bag, these are ideal for that because, again, they're going to take up the space of your 100-400 or your, your 70-200, kind of, um, and, and they're light. Them to get out there. Another lens, the 600 millimeter. This is very similar to the 800. This so. lens, this lens is nuts. Okay, the 800 is crazy. This one's nuts too. Go ahead, tell them about it. Go ahead. 
extends just the same. Exa exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, there's two new RF teleconverters, a 1.4 times and two times option, both compatible even with those 600 and 800 millimeter lenses. Judging from the log files that I've taken off the camera, the highlight retention and shadow detail is better than I, than I anticipated. There were some shots that I did where, yes, as you were saying, Alan, backlit, and I handled it extremely well. I was able to pull up some detail in those log files. I can only imagine that in the Canon RAW files, I'm able to get a little bit more. So, 8K RAW video. How is it? Is it even real? Oh, it's real, all right. The R5 can record 8K RAW video internally, which is honestly an astonishing feat when you think about it. More than that, though, there are zero compromises to crop or autofocus. In fact, AF is fully engaged and working in this and every other video recording mode. Still works. Autofocus still works. And he missed it. Working with the 8K RAW, you're looking at a, the 12-bit file on that. You've got a nice range to work with. It's gonna fit very well with the Cinema EOS type products if you're combining those. And uh, the R5, you've got 8K RAW, which is basically its own type of codec, right? It's its own kind of realm. Uh, you have 8K as a H.265 in Canon Log. But I get it. Resolution isn't everything, although 8K is pretty cool. So to that end, the R5 also shoots up to 4K 120fps, again with full autofocus support. 4K, you'll be able to work with H.265 or H.264 standard. And again, it is 10-bit 422 internal. Just looking back again at the movie options, we have the 8K DCI, UHD, 4K DCI, then UHD, and regular full HD, so 1080p. Um, you can see here that based on the options you choose, based on the resolutions you choose, different frame rates open up and different recording formats open up. Um, so you're never really wondering or skimming through different uh, lists to find the right format for you. Certain things are eliminated or grayed out um, if you can't use them. So it does make that a little easier. For the first time, we're actually doing HDRPQ, and I know not a lot of people have really adopted the, the HDRPQ workflows yet, but if you are working in a high dynamic range video workflow, this allows you to shoot that right in camera and then go straight to your editor with, with a high dynamic range image in capture. On the R6, video still is a big deal if you don't need cinema level raw footage. You get 4K 60p uncropped in 10-bit 422 Canon log while 1080p can go up to 120 FPS here, so you still have some great slow motion options. You do see things in the R5 and the R6 like the 20 FPS burst, which is a speed that we don't usually associate with something that isn't a sports camera, for example. The 20 frame per second is that electronic silent shutter, so you can run a, a 12 frame per second mechanical if 20 is too much for you, because 20 frames, as you know, Doug, now that coming through 20 frames per second, <laughs> all those images that Alan was yeah, shooting, it's, that's a lot it's, of images. It's something like 2,000 images I'm, I'm currently going through. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll find the best. I was thinking about that while I held the trigger <laughs> down. I just want you to know that. I go, gee, I wonder how many pictures Doug's going through at this moment. Bubbles. Ha! <laughs> Accessories for the R5 and the R6. I know the big one probably is that there's a new battery. We have here the brand new LP E6NH. This is the successor to the widely known LP E6 that we've seen in cameras, uh, Canon cameras for quite a while now. And the good news is that it is backwards compatible with the cameras that you have. Maybe it's a, a 62 or a 5D4 or anything that's an LP E6. This battery is backwards compatible. So don't worry about having to buy new chargers, new batteries. It's just this, can't, this battery is 
uh, a newer, smarter battery that does give us a little bit more life on the, the shot count and record life count. And there's a new grip, right? Right, we actually have two grips. Um, one is the BGR10. It's just a standard battery grip. That'll fit both the R5 and R6. So that gives you the extension for two batteries in the camera that gives you the vertical release, uh, your, your joystick on the, on the, the, for vertical shooting as well, and all the buttons that you would want for vertical shooting. But then we've also got a Wi-Fi transmitter grip that's for the EOS R5 only. Um, and this is for someone who needs longer transmissions or, or maybe they're um, needing a ethernet port connection. You know, a lot of our sports and agency type photographers need to plug in to go directly to a, uh, a media center. Uh, right. So you have that ethernet port in the, the Wi-Fi grip plus um, and enhanced capabilities of the, the Wi-Fi grip for that. I gotta say, this feels not just like new cameras, but it really does feel like it, it completes the RF system. When you're going out to use a gear the way we are, shooting video, shooting stills, and having to come home with something, everything performed as advertised. Uh, and that, that's the bottom line, too. It's, you know, when, when you wrap up after a, a long, uh, a hot, sunny day, and you know you have good work in the cards, that says a lot. That's, that's something to do that either as a professional or as a serious enthusiast, it's worth a lot. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the creation that people are going to do with these cameras because they're not just still cameras anymore. They're, they're, they're image creation cameras, whether that's stills, video, it's content creation. Everybody's having to do stills, video, blogs, social media. It's no longer just stills, just video. You know, everybody's doing it in some way, shape or form. There's a lot of thought process into these cameras, and I think people are going to be very, very surprised by what they're seeing in these two camera products. So before we go, just a quick mention that Canon's also announcing a new entry in their image ProGraph line of printers. Ideal for those massive R5 prints, you know you're going to need it. The Image ProGraph Pro 300 is a 13-inch professional printer featuring a new matte black ink and can even print to panorama paper up to 39 inches, which is really cool if you stitch photos together. If you're looking to print for galleries and need professional quality, this could be a solid option. I want to thank you both for joining me and, and you know, thank you, Drew, for uh, bringing us on that shoot on Monday. Yeah. I think it really will change some people's minds if they were still on the fence. You know, I've, I've been sold in mirrorless for a while personally, but I do understand the hesitation and I really think people should give these a try because they deliver, they really do. So that's it for testing. You know, I had a blast today, the new Canon EOS R5 and R6. Um, by the way, just before we go back to the conversation, you should know that these are completely weather sealed. Oh God, what? All right, go, go, go back. So I'll see you guys hopefully next time. Okay. Thanks guys. See you.